are so excited that you have joined us for the Matt and Kendall Hagee podcast. You know, it's something that we are beginning to do and hope that it is a blessing in your life. And uh, we're focusing our first few podcasts in this series on relationships because that's obviously who we are and what we're about. Uh, Kendall and I have been married for 15, 15 years, years. And, and have learned a lot in growing together. And still have more to learn. Through that relationship. And we've got a lot more to learn. And we hope to be able to encourage you in whatever stage or phase of relationship you're in. You know, there are some people who are listening and, and you've been married longer. And uh, you've probably got a lot of advice to offer to people who are newly wed or haven't yet wed. You know, my dad... He often says it this way. He says, if you're married, if you are if you want to be married, or if you're sorry you're married. I always <laughs> say when he says that, if anybody's going to raise their hand or look over at their spouse. Well, occasionally he gets an amen. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the truth is, is that regardless of the relationship you're in, every relationship can be a better relationship. And uh, most of the time, whenever Kendall and I are, are considering a relationships, the first thing that has to be done is you've got to consider the other person in your relationship. Relationships are sacrificial things. They're, they're not something that you get into for the satisfaction of self. And you have to be willing to understand that. Otherwise, you're going to engage in the process in a totally wrong way. That's in, right, yeah. I mean, when we started dating, I mean, we were, I was in the church. You saw me in the church um, back in October, but you had a specific list in your Bible that you were sharing about that you had it down to my hair color and in Proverbs. And then I was praying for you, but you didn't know that yet, yet either. But isn't it amazing how God brought us two together? Well, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, you're specifically talking about our dating relationship before we got married and, and one of the things that was somewhat unique about that situation is that rather than, uh, you know, just decide that I would go on a date here or a date there, I wrote down a list of things and began to pray about them that these are the things that I wanted in a spouse. And, and some of them were uh, aesthetic. I want brown hair and blue eyes. And, and some of them were absolute, you know, Do not found, be found, foundational convictions Christ that they first. had to be you know, first and foremost, a follower of Jesus Christ. Secondly, uh, they had to have a high value of family. You know, there, there were a number of things that were important to me, and, and they were things that I had felt in my, you know, own self that these are the, the types of characteristics that God would put in a spouse. And so I wrote those things down. I prayed about them. And then whenever I met Kendall, I started to take that list and, and look for the things that I was praying about and right down to the hair color and the eyes, there it was. So, And I was the same way. I was praying for you and I said, I want him to be love Christ first and then love his family second. But then I also looked at how you treated your three sisters. I knew that if a, if a man was going to treat his sisters and his mother, how they treated them would be how he would treat me. Well, and, and through this, you know, our relationship began to develop, and our relationship developed from a simple friendship well, yeah, for, to a dating relationship, from a dating relationship to an engagement, from an engagement relationship to a marriage. And now that we've been married 15 years, we're still developing this relationship. We're still in the process of growing together. Now, we're a lot more together now than we were 15 years ago. That's right. But, you know, that that's part of these two saith God shall become one. one. And, you know, those are things that I think are important to keep in mind when it comes to relationships it is your relationship should always be growing. It should always be developing. You don't get to a point where you say, you know what, I've got this figured out and, and I know all there is to know. Uh, because I think that's where people find themselves in the trap of, well, they're, they're bored. They're, they're, you know, I've been with this person for 10, 15 years. You know, nothing is new. Nothing is exciting. If it's not new and it's not exciting, guess what? That's your fault. 
you're the reason that it's not new and it's not exciting. You've got to bring some dynamic to that relationship that continues to create value. Right. Yeah. And I think it's important that our listeners know that we were talking through back then through like the messenger. So it's a lot different in the dating world now, Matt. I mean, they, it's, it's all through texting and social media and different, you know, that they communicate or they don't communicate. And so I think it's very hard for single women and single men out there that are listening, thinking, well, how does this all, how does this begin? How do you even start dating? Well, I think that applications have changed for sure. You know, yeah. digital um, media and social media have certainly changed the nature of communication. You can reach out to a lot more people in a lot less meaningful way. Nice. And so in many situations, young people especially, they don't feel as compelled to develop relationship because the void for fellowship in their life is filled in the superficial context of social media. Yeah. Rather than having a meaningful conversation with one person, they feel like getting a thousand likes from people they don't know is satisfaction. And yeah. so it, it becomes a matter of uh, personal development for them to really focus in on having a relationship with one person. And, and you know, what they need to recognize is that they were created for that kind of relationship. When God yeah. created Adam, he, I always think it's funny when I read this in Genesis, he created the heavens and the earth. He said it was good. He created the sun, the moon, and the stars. He said it was good. The fish, the birds, the animals, he said it was good. He created man. And just a few verses after he created um, man, he said, it's not, not good, good for you to be, to be alone. You're created for a relationship. And so he created someone for you. And that someone is not a like on Instagram, that someone is not a follower on yeah. Twitter, that someone is somebody that God wants you to share your life with as a gift. And in order for you to do that, you've got to recognize that that's going to require you giving yourself to them and they give themselves to you. Yeah. You know, there's been a lot of things that in 15 years of relationship, marriage and kids, Kendall and I have both had to recognize that what we're doing is giving ourselves to, to each, each other, other and to our family. That's right. You know, that's the only way that this works. If we at any point in time decide I'm not willing to give that, then that part of the relationship ceases to function like it should because rather than putting in, we're taking out and that's not our purpose. Our purpose is to be contributors to each other, uh, to be complements to one another, not to be in competition. And a lot of times relationships are, are in the modern world competition. A, a husband goes out and has a career. And, and how, many, how many young ladies, how many women do you know, Kendall, that you know, they say, well, if he's going to earn money, I'm going to earn money and I'm going to earn more money. And I want my own bank account and I want my own yeah. this. And, they try to do things separate instead of doing it together, helping each other, which I'm all for working women. I'm a, I'm a working mom. Absolutely. And I it, think it's, it's not great. a matter of no, work, uh -uh. but it, the work is for complementing. It's, it's yes, not for competition. Not for competition. Yeah. yeah. And, and whenever you do it as a compliment, you make each other stronger. Whenever you do it in competition, you tear each other down. Yeah. And rather than build each other up, encourage one another, you create uh, more stress, you create more energy to be expended, and you exhaust whatever is left after you've gone out and faced the world that you're facing. And so, you know, I think it's important for people to understand that whenever they begin this process of relationship, no matter what stage, phase, or purpose they have in it, it's got to be a matter of willingness to lay down yourself and, and, and allow yourself to become a part of this relationship that gives other people the opportunity to get to know you better and enjoy your company more. That's right. And I think, I mean, when, so I would encourage to go to church, find, you know, you don't want to find your future husband. Well, that's a question that's that we get where, asked know, often by single people. Yes. Where did you where meet? Did you, we met at church. We met at church. I started and, to and come to church. Then single people want to know, you, where do you I saw you, I knew, hey, do the first right. I first gave a letter to the security guard that, but that didn't work. So then I called and got your email. First thing, email, text them, maybe instant messenger. So basically what you're telling everybody <laughs> on this podcast is you were pursuing make the me. First, yes, I was. But you know what? I knew that I had to make the first move. Not that you wouldn't have made it, but I knew that if I took the first step that, you know, to see where it went. Well, I will say this, that if you have a desire, you're going to have to take a risk because yes. only with risk is there reward. 
And, uh, you know, Kendall did take some risks in getting to know me, but I would say that over the last both, 15 years, yes. you have been significantly rewarded. I have very Absolutely. much Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, to the point, a lot of young people and single people ask all the time, you know, where do you, where do you go to meet somebody? Yeah, how do you even Go to start? church. Yeah. And, and, and I suggest Get with a group of yeah, Christians. getting involved with a group of fellow believers, uh, getting involved in a church community, getting involved in small groups. Uh, these are places where you meet qualified candidates because there are qualified and disqualified. And first and foremost, they've got to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's a non-negotiable. Uh, and then there's several other things that I would highly recommend, but that might be for another podcast. What, what I encourage you to do is regardless of the stage or phase of relationship you're in, if you're single, you need to recognize that God created you for someone and he created someone for you. If you're, for if you. you're married, you need to recognize that God has a role for you to play in that marriage relationship that gives you a more meaningful experience tomorrow than you're having today. Every marriage can be a, a better, better marriage. marriage. And if you've got a great marriage, and it's been a great marriage for a long time, first and foremost, congratulations. That's wonderful. You're one of the 17%. Well, you, you just quoted a statistic that has been stated that 17% of marriages are happy, are marriages. happy marriages. However, if you are among the so-called 17%, then I think that it's important for you to find another couple that you can mentor, find That's another good. single person that you can encourage because you have a gift and that gift should be shared so that people begin to value family once again. Uh, one of the great challenges that I see America facing is that we have taken our focus off of the family. We don't yes have a desire to protect and defend what is the absolute cornerstone of society. And that is one man loving one woman and raising children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. So we hope we encouraged you today on communication and um, talking about your relationships and the story of us hearing a little bit about how Matt and I got together 15 years ago. And those of you that are single and those of you that are married, we talked about marriage, singleness, everything. But God has a plan for you and we want you to continue to listen to us, subscribe to this podcast. And we're going to continue this on relationships and talk it out, walk it out, and work it out. So you don't want to miss these upcoming episodes.